Hi, welcome back to the Small Barn Workshop. After months of renovating and repairing the fabric of the barn, it is now time to concentrate on fitting out the workshop. And the first act is to construct the corner workbench that will also double as tool storage. So in this video, I'm going to make the structure of this workbench. And to start the process, I went down to my local builder's merchant and bought a few lengths of inch and a half by three sewn timber. And this was cut to the various components I needed for the major framework, with a small allowance for playing a snipe. This timber needed regularising, so to do so, I first passed it through my Evolution Rage 5S table saw. This is the first time the table saw and the little Evolution cat carrying case vacuum cleaner have been paired. I then passed it through my Triton thickness planer to create plain four-sided timber. I am hoping to get much more use out of this planer than I did in the small loft workshop. And the garden borders will benefit from all the shavings. I'm glad I decided to do that, quite decent think that's where it started off looking like. So this timber that I've just planed up cost me about 28 euros so when you think the sell for about 16 euros I sell a piece of 2 by 3 plane so I probably if I had bought plain timber probably cost me about 80, 90 maybe even 100 euros so for a quarter of the price I've actually got some good quality timber. Now I have my stock prepared the next step is to mark out the ladder frame that will become the bench top. The top is 2.3 meters long and 600 millimeters wide, so around seven foot six by two feet. Here, I'm performing a little measuring trick that negates the need for maths. There, 600 millimeters. Because these pieces were all originally cut over size, by trimming them down to size, I also get rid of the planar snipe. And now I've got my pieces cut to length, I can mark out the frame. Now this next step is completely unnecessary, but because I've been separated from my tools for so long, I felt the need to play with my Festal Domino. I could have just buttered the joints together and fixed them using four inch metal tenons, screws or nails. But here I'm using a 10mm domino, the biggest domino that I can insert with this machine. And because at this moment in time I do not have a workbench, I had to set a stop up on the top of my Rage 5. Ok, now time to glue in the dominoes and glue the frame together. Note I'm using my trusty IKEA glue brush and also using a couple of screws to clamp the frame together while the glue dries. And finally, before the glue does dry, ensure the frame is square by measuring the diagonals if you find it not to be square, it's just a case of moving the frame around along its diagonal until both diagonals are exactly the same. I drill a series of mounting holes into the rear and side of the frame so I can mount it to the wall and then just run the route around the underside to take off any sharp corners. Now time to take it into the barn and fix it in its place, ensuring that it is level in both length and in width. I clamp a temporary leg in place on the front left hand corner just to stabilise it during the fixing process. I 
I do the same for the middle so I can give it its first loading test. The two units that sit underneath the bench that will house the tools are made from 18mm melamine phase chipboard that was bought relatively cheap as my local builders merchant had them on sale. And like my domino earlier, it was really nice to get reacquainted with my bench dog tools. This rail square really does give you a perfect cut every time. And it's also really nice to see my track saw again. These panels are the facings for the legs, two for the middle and one for the left hand side. The Festool creates a really neat cut across the melamine face, but I always find with melamine it's nice just to give it a little touch with some sandpaper. The top of these panels just need to be cut around the rear bearer of the top. Here I'm using the jigsaw and you can see how raggedy it a jigsaw cut is compared to the Festool track saw. I'm fitting these end panels so the chipboard does not sit directly on the floor. I haven't yet had an issue with water coming into the bar, but should that happen during a storm, I don't want it to soak into the chipboard panels. Once I'd fit the panel to one side, then I could fit the softwood framework within the panels that actually create the legs that do load bare onto the floor. Now, do you ever get to a point in a project where everything is going really well and you think you're doing a great job and then overnight or when you've come away from the project, you realise you may have created a little bit of an issue? Well, here is one of them issues. Eventually, I will have a front face on this bench, but that is for a later video. But my concern was I couldn't get the front frame to work unless the shelves were level across the bottom and the level that I had chosen for them may not work because of this concrete step in the floor. So I eventually came up with a solution where I cut my bottom shelf to sit inside the middle upright and sit under the left hand side upright. And to fix the shelves I needed a series of bearers to sit them on so I cut some inch by two timber from some of the most warped boards I had bought to clad the inside of the walls. Note I'm using a little piece of melamine offcut just to ensure the space in between the bearer and the underside of the upright. That fits nice and snug. To fix the shelf and the upright together, I elected to use some pocket hole screws, so I broke out my Craig pocket hole screw jig. I was a little surprised to find my wife had written wellies and Vaseline on the packaging for the Craig drill bit. I've not got a clue why it says that. Once I'd made my pocket hole screw recesses, I could refit the end panel. For some reason, I forgot to press my record button on the camera, so it didn't record me inserting the pocket hole screws. But I'm glad to say that my plan worked and I'm happy for the next phase. The tool storage is now starting to take shape. And at the end of the day, I couldn't help but to shoot this fabulous sunset over the top of the barn workshop. Next day, next shelf. The installation is pretty much as per the previous day. Other than I had to scribe the shelf into the rear wall 
as it's not quite 100% square. I used the largest thing I could find that I knew to be square, in this case a piece of hardboard, to make the measurements and then ditched the fence dog square because this cut was not square. And because the shelf runs straight into the end wall, I needed to cut the shelf around the vertical upright that supports the end of the bench. Now here is the controversy of this workbench. I am using the same 18mm melamine face chipboard for the top. At least for now I am exploring a few different types of tops. But for now I just want to get a top on that is usable and come back to this when some more of the elements of the workshop are established. I figure for the price, 18 euros, it will last a good few months of cutting and hammering and hopefully chipboard is relatively stable in humid conditions. It will be an interesting experiment and will add to the previous experiment I did regarding plywood and MDF. See the link in the top right hand corner. Like the shelf below, the top needed to be scribed into the right hand end. Because I like a challenge, I made it as awkward to cut the piece as I possibly could. And there it is, the structure of my new bench with a VEC tool storage. I'll see you next week when I'll be doing some more work on this bench.